Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, July 6, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Mark chapter 3, reading from verse 22 to 29. And it says, And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He had Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devil cast ye out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself, and he be divided, he cannot stand, but had an hen. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost had never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. And I say, Amen. So here we see again the Pharisees, they come accusing Jesus of something again. When it is not one thing, it's another. And so Jesus was there with his disciples and the people and he was teaching and they and he was casting out devils and healing and doing good and the scribes came down to Jerusalem accusing him of being a Beelzebub and we know here that Beelzebub means demons so they are basically saying that Jesus is casting out demons because he's basically a devil too because hear what it says he had Beelzebub and by the prince of the devils cast ye out devils. Hmm. So they are basically saying that Jesus is the devil. And so because he is a devil and he is in alliance with Satan, that is why he can cast out the devils because they are listening to him. But let's see what scripture is saying. And so he hearing this he then speak to them a parable and he asked the question how can satan cast out satan if i am satan how am i going to cast out myself so that's the first logic that they just are just spilling nonsense out of their mouth and he went on to to, to say that if a kingdom is divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand think about it if the kingdom is divided if they cannot agree on anything if they are pulling in several direction instead of one direction unify effort that kingdom is going to fall 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 mm -hmm. and so if a house is divided against itself there's going to be chaos it can't stand and that is why you'll often hear the saying that Two bulls can't reign in the same pen. Mm -mm. It cannot. Is there? Is either there going to be one bull or no bull? But two bulls can't reign in the same pen. And so if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand. So this first part of the parable put what the Pharisees are saying about Jesus calling me a devil to rest. It puts it to naught. It proves that Jesus can't be the devil. Because if he casting out the devil and the devil's coming out, how is it that he's the devil? Uh-huh. Okay. Let's go on. And he continues to say, No man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods without him first incapacitating the strong man. So in other words, if you know that you're going to, to rob somebody and pre-adventure the person is at home and the person have a way of defending themselves. Do you think that it is wise for you to try and rob that person? No! Because what? It's a great possibility that you are going to be defeated because the person is 
expecting you or the person is much more capable than you because the person is stronger than you. I'll give you an example to make it easier. Remember Samson? When the Philistines came for Samson, what did they have to do in order to capture Samson? Do you remember? They had to cut off his locks, right? And, and even though the locks was symbolic, it was a symbol in which God used to identify with his strength. So it wasn't that his here was the strength. The strength came from God, but here was just symbolic and so they had to incapacitate him they had to take off what they believed to be his strength so and then bind him up so that they could take him away if they never did that they could not have taken him away he would have slaughtered them from left right and center and so that is the point that the message is making here or the passage is making here when and so point here is that Division equal defeat. Uh-huh. Do we get that? Okay. And so that is why as Christians, we must be united on the same cause. If we are to be more effective in this world. You can't some have you can't have some saying one thing, another saying another thing. We are doing our own thing. And so all we are doing is creating confusion and so after a while nobody wants to hear what we have to say because what what are we trying to say do you understand and a very important point along with that we must understand the reading tell us is that yes they were accusing jesus of blasphemy because they say that he's making himself god or whatnot but here god is saying in the parable that look here if you believe that i am doing that or if anyone is committing any form of sin, including blasphemy, that is, is something that can be forgiven. Uh huh. But, and he went on to say, the sin or the blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, it can never be forgiven. And that's the seriousness of it. And here why it cannot be forgiven. It cannot be forgiven because the Holy we are sealed through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that seals us. Let's explain that, what I mean by that. The Bible says that God sent us his Holy Spirit which will guide us into all truth. Correct? Now, if the Holy Spirit is the one that is helping us to understand God's word, if the Holy Spirit is the one that is working through our consciences, if the Holy Spirit is the one helping us to make good decisions and to do the things that are right and pleasing in the sight of God, and we turn away the Holy Spirit, we grieve the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit leave us, who are we left with? Who will help us? Who will guide us? If we blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, if we sin against the Holy Ghost, who will help us? So you understand? So we must see that it is important for us to understand these principles so that we don't make the mistakes just like the Pharisees did. Mm -hmm. Let us remember that there is only one truth and that's God's truth. And so what's the message I want us to take uh, away from this passage this morning? If we are divided, then we will fall. As a church, if we are divided, we won't be successful. And two, we can receive forgiveness for our sin. But if we sin against the Holy Spirit, then we are in danger of eternal death. All right? So may God help us, help us to do and to act in accordance with his will and to listen to the pleading and the guidance, the guiding of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.